that's one of the really great things about Zoom is that we can all communicate and be in this, if you like, in, meet in the fifth province, in the imaginal space. But we're also really meeting in our bodies. And it's our body is the, if you like, the barometer for our experience. It tells us where we are, how we are, how we're experiencing what's happening. And it's a huge resource to have because with all the neuroscience now, we realize that body is not separate to brain, if we ever thought it was, some people do, but that it's very influenced by our brain and we can affect how our body is responding by being aware. So the first thing I'd invite all of us to do is just be aware of your own surroundings, taking a little look around where you are, the room you're in, and taking yourself off camera just for a moment by just looking around. So you're not caught under this the glare of the uh, screen. The image that I use in my book, I use the image of Newgrange, and, uh, which is a cairn, which means a pile of stones. I love that, but it's just a pile of stones. But these cairns are situated on a lot of the hilltops around the country. And from a distance, they really look like nipples in the female body. So it's always about body, you know, like a pile of stones, like the nipple or the breast of the woman, the paps, they call them. In many of the, the mountains are referred to as the paps in many of uh, the counties in Ireland. And the cairn, we would say the story unfolds that the goddess drops the pile of, care, of stones on the cairn. And she's shaping it's like shaping it's like dreaming the dream world of the aboriginal communities and in the shaping of the cairn it's shaped in the shape of the woman's body you have got the vulva and the vagina entering into the womb space and then you have the ovaries at either side there's a side chamber and so this cairn which we know very little about we call them temples we call them womb tombs there are places, are uh, spaces that are full of imagination. And I love to use an image because we know from neuroscience that more brain centers respond to image than anything else. So if we want to be alive, aware, alert, and learning, and curious is the word many people use today, using an image is a really powerful way in. And I found Newgrange a wonderful image to use in my book, which is so much about finding a way through the body into that body psyche space. And Newgrange itself, not alone is it a pile of stones in the shape of the woman's body, but it's also got something that's really important, which is alignment. So, some of you will have heard of Stonehenge in England, the pyramids, of course, near Cairo, these megalithic sites that are over 5,000 years old. But oldest of them all is Newgrange in the Boyne Valley. And this particular alignment is with winter solstice. So on the 21st of December, in the days around it, the sun rises in the morning over the hill opposite the cairn. And then slowly the light travels up the passageway of this cairn and lights up the central passage. So there's something, here we are looking at uh, pictures of some of the megalithic sites. Yeah, Mary is going to show a picture here. Would you like to talk us through that, Marion? Yeah. So that's the light as it's coming through. The entrance is below and the sunlight is coming through what they call an aperture. It's like a box shape above the opening because the passageway rises with the hill. And so it, in order just for their, you know, the, um, the geography of it to get it, or the symmetry of it to get it precise, they created this box above the entranceway 5,000 years ago. So the light would travel up the passageway and into the central uh, chamber where many of the stones are beautifully engraved. And there are three beautiful big basins, again, in that chamber, receptacles, just carrying, holding 
whether it's prayer or bones or offerings or corpses, we don't know. But we know that the space itself is imbued with a lot of energy. So I'm suggesting that at this time of our lives, with what's happening globally, in particular as we're looking at the COVID response, there's been a lot of out of alignment. We are beside ourselves. We're beyond ourselves. We're above ourselves. We're below ourselves. We're outside ourselves. We don't know where we are. There's an, a lack of orientation. Politically, there's a lack of orientation. But there's psychologically for people, uncertainty is very evocative and triggering, we would use the word in trauma language. It triggers our defenses. And our defenses are always there about survival. So it triggers our old defenses, how we're best used to surviving. And each one of us survives in our own very particular way, a fight, flight, or freeze response to a situation. Now we have a collective response. If we were all to tell the story of how our country is responding, they'd be all pretty unique, you know. I'm in London, it's completely different to Dublin, it's completely different to Canada, it's completely different to India, it's completely different to California. And yet every country thinks they know how to survive. All the rules, all the restrictions are about how we're going to survive. But it's indicative of that it's coming from that perhaps collective or cultural trauma that people have experienced and that creates such a major clampdown, or maybe from the empire and feeling nothing is going to get us, we'll be fine. So in London, you wouldn't see a mask if you walk around the streets. In India, they beat you up if you go on the street without a mask because the powers of the gods are so huge, we cannot tempt them. So that's the cultural response, but there's also our own personal response, our own fight, flight, or freeze. And the good news is that we are not condemned to those early responses. I say early in the, because they come from that time when we are in our mother's womb, our first container. And then as we move through life, through our primary attachment figure, we say, which is often mother, our brains are shaped. The responses we have come from that relationship and they shape our fight flight, freeze, response. As you can imagine, there are many layers of that because it's transgenerational, what your mother's experience was. That's what's going on culturally. You know, I've just had a grandchild born in COVID. That's a completely different experience to my grandchildren who were born three years ago, five years ago. Absolutely different mother. So just to say that we're all the time responding from our earliest times. But we are also knowing that we have the possibility for rewiring. And that's where I bring in the metaphor for new range of alignment. Rewiring and alignment are similar. We want to align with ourselves at our best, where we're feeling less, least restricted, we could say. And when we have some sense of space, and some sense of deep connection with the earth. Like that passageway leads up to the dark cavern, if you like, a dark chamber. But the dark chamber is lit, light. It's penetrated by light. And if you think of that, it's like an axis. It runs from the sky down through the body and into the earth. And when we're aligned, we have that sense that we are aligned with both that is outside ourselves, surrounding us, and deep down into the earth beneath us. It's that alignment of psyche, soma, body and soul, matter and spirit, ego and self, with a capital S, as the union might say. So the threshold I want to bring us to, the threshold is the point at which you enter the caring. 
You don't just shoot in from the field and get right into it. There's this magnificent, huge, big curb stone, which is called the entrance stone or the threshold stone. And on that, there are many spirals. And the spirals are connected. There may be two or there may be a triple spiral. And the new range spirals are seen in many sites around the world. It's always representing life and death and life, death and rebirth. They're regenerative, like the cycles of the winter solstice that's announcing the beginning of the sun rising in the northern hemisphere and the coming of spring in next month. So too the thresholds marks the place where we notice that we're out of kilter. We notice, we pay attention, we're beside ourselves, that we're responding in an old place of fight, of flight, that we're constricted in our response. We may have even gone into collapse, immobility. We can do nothing. I've gone into freeze, we say. So at a threshold, we're asking ourselves, where have I gone? What's happening? We try to reorient ourselves from that place, we could say, from the spiral, that's the spiral of survival, and we move into a spiral of potential and possibility. It's the spiral of healing. And this is a beautiful dance that I talk about in the book, moving between what's activating us, what's bringing out our fight, flight, freeze response, and also what's supporting us to trust, to open, to be connected. There's a guy called Stephen Porges who works with the polyvagal system mm -hmm. in the body-mind. It's like how the brain and the heart and all the organs in the body are affected by this vagus nerve, it's called the wanderer. And we have the capacity we now know through these awareness or mindfulness of threshold moments of what we do, of when we recognize we take cognizance of the fact that we are out of alignment. Well, then our responsibility to ourselves is really to find a way to realign. One of the things we notice about our brains is they're connected to our bodies and they're connected to chemicals. They produce chemicals which produce emotions. So, you know, we've been asking ourselves right from the beginning of COVID, how much, how much do, time do we spend at the news? And we can continue with that and stay on this vagal nerve <coughs> activation of heart rate, firing on all cylinders, producing the chemicals of dopamine, adrenals, glands are absolutely firing and everything. So, there's a threshold at which I have to say, pause. Maybe I just need to look around for a moment and see what I see. And it may only be two or three minutes, or maybe it's going to be, I'm going to have to turn the TV off, or I'm going to have to stop the news for a few minutes because I am no longer in myself. I've moved out of myself. And I think that threshold for me, it's, it's just so beautiful, the threshold of New Grange. And I, I love the idea that thresholds in themselves are places of beauty because they can really help us to realign. And activism is so important. But, you know, for me, for instance, Gandhi, the practice was so deep and on so many levels. Even when you look at him, his body is living something. It's not just the mind firing madly. There's something in which mind and heart and body are aligned. And I think that we're moving with Zoom and everything. We're needing to move. We're moving globally, but we've got to really get this center of body, heart, and mind really so attuned that our power of intention will be creative and will produce the miracles.